Good afternoon, everybody. It's Ross Skorzewski, your host of the Dr. Patrick Flynn Show. Once again, sitting with the one and only amazing legend status is being created. <laughs> <laughs> the hormone whisperer, Dr. Patrick Flynn. We are super excited because once again, we're going to be diving into your questions, hoping to provide you with information that will challenge the way you think as you go looking for truth in regards to your health concern. Doc, talk to me. What's going on in your world? You're a little jacked up today. What's no. going on? Come on. Yeah, I knew you were going to bring that talk up. Talk to me. All right. Uh, now comes the, uh, um, yeah, I actually didn't want to bring it up. And my wife actually <laughs> made me promise that I behave today and stuff like that. So I don't even, is that possible? No, it's not. But okay. she, uh, what she, she meant tries. Is, is because what happens, something happened this morning that uh, um, Nicole, and it was on our show last week. Yep. So for example, is uh, we had one of our patients refer in this beautiful young lady from the Oshkosh area. Okay. And, um, and we keep her name, you know, uh, private that way. That's right. Uh, but I'm not going to keep the, the other part private. Okay. <laughs> That's why my wife's like, be nice, be, be nice. nice. I'm like, oh, honey, I can't be nice sometimes because here's what happened. So she actually, um, poor young lady, would devastatingly went in because she had a miscarriage. And so she went to the, the Mercy Medical down there, you know, the hospital, and she saw a doc, which my wife asked me to keep him remain nameless. But I will tell you right now, doc, <laughs> you, you are clueless. When it comes to fertility, you are clueless when it comes to female hormones, and you are clueless when it comes to helping women get pregnant, and you should be ashamed for what you told us. Raw, woman. unscripted, and you're going to hear oh, right here. That's right, because here's the result. Because here's one thing. You can disagree with what I just said. You can say, Doc, you're, you're calling out Mercy Hospital and what they're doing, their doctor's saying. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. They should be ashamed of what they told this young lady. So give me her history this way. Young lady, trying to get pregnant, had a miscarriage, and so what happened is, so she sought us out. Now, here's where it comes out. You can have a difference in opinion with That's fine. Sure. But keep your mouth shut. Shut your pie shut hole. Shut your pie hole. Okay? Because here's what happens. So then Nicole does detailed history, detailed labs that they never Testing. even think of. Testing. That they never even think of. It's even clueless in their mind. And guess what happened? So we are very – now, guys, remember this. We are very uh, adamant about this. We always tell people, people say, Doc, what should I do? Should I ask my doctor? This? We always tell people, we don't care what you do. Just let us do our work. Right. Exactly. So she wanted to know if you can bring the labs. I said, absolutely bring – Nicole, bring all your labs to every doctor you see. Well, this idiot from Mercy Hospital down in Oshkosh, or I think it's Oshkosh. Okay, wherever Mercy <laughs> Hospital is down there, your, your reproductive department should be ashamed of themselves. And what happens is this. So she brings CLIA certified labs, okay? That means government approved everything certified that way. Every lab that they can do and stuff like that brings it to him. He looks at her and says, they're invalid. They have no validity. They're false. Well, everything we do here is, guess what? Wrong. Wrong. All right, man. Ugh, if my wife didn't ask me to behave, we'd be having some words right we'd now. We'd be I'd having call an hour right long now. episode. But if you're a director of the hospital, right, give me a call. You're know saying, let me teach you guys something because you're so far behind in your understanding of fertility. You should be ashamed of yourself. You even charge anybody for something. So, I don't know, I'm a little riled up. Okay. No, it gets better. <laughs> yes, so yes. It gets better. I love this. So it gets better. So Come she on. is diagnosed with cysts and ruptures and bleeding and everything like that. And they said, listen, and she's like, so she says to the doctor, she says, listen, she's like, can you, can you um, at least then do some valid testing, kind of being, you know, saying, okay, you're saying it's not valid, let's do some. He said, no. He goes, until you have three miscarriages, we're not going to do anything. So you got to love that, huh? Until you have three stinking miscarriages, this is what our medical institution is telling us. Women. And telling the women. And then we wonder why they're so stinking frustrated. They're frustrated. And this beautiful young lady just wants to have a family. Who wants to go through one the emotional turmoil that that woman had to go through to have one miscarriage and the right. husband, just uh, you know, just knowing what they went through is disgusting. But hold on. There's two more before we can even do anything. Yes. So then, but on oh, top of yeah, it, yeah, so yeah. let's say that that was their procedure and they want to do it. Fine. If you guys want to have your procedures, how you handle it. And the guys, let me tell you something. The reason why they chose to do it isn't because the patient care. Number one, they don't know what to do. And number two, insurance. They're Everything's dictated by insurance. Sure. The doctor clueless. The, let's call him Dr. Clueless since Dr. I can't use clueless. his last name. But his last name starts with a B. <laughs> it's O-B-Habe. Okay. Hey. It's O-B-Habe. You know what I'm saying? I have to. So let's call, let's call him Dr. Clueless. Okay. So what happened is this. So get this. So um, he, tells, he tells that. So even if he didn't, dis, didn't agree with what we do, you know, keep your mouth shut because you have no clue. Do you see what I'm saying? I, we don't interfere with your procedures. Don't interfere with ours. Right. And I should interfere with your procedures, even though it's illegal. But I should interfere with some of the crap, concluding today, what we're going to talk about. Oh, so good anyways, Lord, right? So I got all riled up and I was just like, because this, because what happened is, so here's the cool thing is this. So she didn't listen to him. She continued her care with Nicole. Thank God. And guess what happened this morning? We got a lovely call. We got a lovely call because there's a little baby on the way. Come on. Do you, Sam? Are you serious? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. High five. 
High five, Nicole. Nicole. Nicole, great job. This family, awesome. So going to Cole's, going to Cole's uh, um, um, Facebook page, her uh, Facebook page, and uh, go check it out because it's pretty awesome. Now, there's another thing I want to bring up too. So, well, let's go like this. Um, I get mad about it, not for myself personally. It's just that for 18 years, imagine having couples sitting right in front of your desk, literally pleading and begging and crying just to have something as simple as a baby. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I know what it's like, personally. You know what it's like. We were there with you. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So the idea is, so that's the frustration, guys. My frustration is not an arrogant standpoint. My frustration is not, uh, we are better than them. My frustration is the people that we have to deal with every day are sitting there crying, suffering, and just intensely will do anything, travel anywhere, pay anything that way. And then their doctors look at them and said, what we do is crap. And I'm going to tell you right now, doc, Dr. E, Dr. Clueless from Mercy Hospital, you're an idiot. You are. Yeah, to think that you would send a woman out of your office With telling that kind them of that they need to go through three miscarriages before you can begin to take them to the next level and treat and test is insane yes. to me. Yeah. I would never step foot back into that doctor's office well, ever again. The thing is this, and see what they do, and here's one thing. So do, does does Mercy not do some good things? Sure, they do. Sure they, do. they have some great life-saving procedures. Absolutely. They probably have some wonderful docs and so that and even if I disagreed with what they did, I would keep my own pie hole shut. Yes. I wouldn't tell them what to do with their patients that way, especially when if I had no answer for them. See you saying? They have their purpose. So the hospital, don't get wrong, they have their purpose and mercy. Don't freak out because I'm tearing on you right now. But you should be ashamed of one yes. of your doctors or what they're telling with patients that way. That person should be disciplined for their reaction that way. Actually, the funny part is that I hope this woman says, uh, makes it public of what the idiot told her. And some of that. It's just ridiculous. So anyways, yeah, well, we, we go on that forever. And But here's one other point because um, actually I got to talk to Dr. Kelly. Uh, Dr. Kelly's been doing a pretty cool thing on Wednesday nights. And if you don't know what her Facebook page is, it's Dr. Kelly Felmer, the thyroid warrior. Thyroid warrior. So she's been doing, she got her, she did a really cool one last uh, Wednesday. And, um, well, actually two Wednesdays ago, because all of her, hers are pretty awesome. I share them on my Facebook to, to watch those guys. But she did one of mammograms. So guys, if you haven't, now remember, she's a nurse practitioner, came from that medical side, and actually she came to the wellness way approach that way. And she's affecting people like crazy. But she did an amazing one on why she wouldn't get a mammogram. Do you saying? So check it out. She does it 8.30 every Wednesdays and stuff of like that. She does it right from her home. It's pretty awesome. Yep. So one of our wonderful docs that's here consistently taking care of people all day long. So check hers out too. And check out all the other wellness ways. Yes. They put great Absolutely. material out there that way because it comes from the same approach. Absolutely. So what are we with talking that, about today? Well, before we get into the next topic, you know, one of the things, especially with this episode taking off the way that it is, like and oh, share. Yes. Please. I know some of these comments that you're hearing right now from Dr. Flynn are going to be the ones that are going to challenge your thinking. They're going to get your blood boiling. So Go down to those little like buttons. You can find yes. the heart. You can find the upset, angry face. You can find the like and just hit those things and go crazy. Do, 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 and a lot of people are, you know what's really cool? Love on this. Every share single, this. Every single week, the show gets bigger. Yes. Every single week, that we get more emails. Every single week, you know, it's kind of yep. cool. And um, because like you said that you say keyword, we bring vital information. We don't tell you what to do. No. You don't, you don't like our show. Guess what? Yeah. Don't watch it. You, you can listen it? to this, or you can also be told that three miscarriages are what you need to have before you can get continued care. So That's I don't right. know. I'd be like, mm -hmm. so with that, with that, where are we I'm going? excited about this one because this is something that I've talked to you about for years. Oh yeah. Uh, you know that I struggled with it from an early age on, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, families think or are struggling with it because of what the Ooh. medical uh, institution is telling these, these families. These are two personal stories for us. Absolutely. So here, let's just dive into this email that was sent to us. Dr. Patrick and Ross. Hi, you see me. I love your show. Oh, we love it. Thank yes, you. Yes. You say things that people don't say. <laughs> I have two boys. Bless you. Yes. And both are of school age. One son who's two years older and has no issues in class and has the ability to focus and stay on task and take direction. My other son has recently been struggling with simple tasks and focusing while in the classroom. The teacher approached me. Yeah. This is how this always seems to go. The teacher approached me with concern during the parent-teacher conference and suggested putting him on medication for ADD, ADHD. We proceeded to make an appointment with our pediatrician, and lo and behold, the diagnosis came, and my son has yep. ADD. They want to put him on medication before the school year, and I am concerned reading all the side effects what is your opinion on the whole ADD, ADHD issue? And boy, let me tell you something. We've got something to say today. Yeah, we do. Because not only the fact it's kind of cool, as you guys know, is we both were diagnosed with some crazy stuff as kids. Yep. Our mothers are here today to kind of explain what it was like emotionally as a mom to go through this. So it was actually the question hit at a perfect time. Really um, now, let's go back to this. 
if you think about it this way, there's there, the way culturally that we do things, it sets us up for failure. Okay. Teachers have a very, very difficult job. I'd agree. Very difficult job. I mean, what they have to go through deal with really, let's say you have 10 kids in a classroom, which is a small classroom. Thank God we you weren't s- in the class together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we're we're going to give that teacher Caesars. Okay. Um, <laughs> we've been expelled again. Separately, yes. you know? No, but get this. So the teacher's environment, what they have to do, they, they have a curriculum. They have stuff they have to follow. They have, they have to put these kids in, in chairs like little zombies and try to get through the criteria so they can get their scores, get pre-testing, all that. And, and, and yep. So the teacher's job is very difficult in the first place because you have 10 little rugrats. If not more. If not more. And then just give a small class of 10 is it's very difficult that way. So therefore, the teacher now, for example, has a, is in a position to educate these kids. And here's one thing. Some of the things, for example, of ADD and ADHD, I think are BS. Okay? Agreed. Agreed. Is it's, it's basically if the, a diagnosis for ADD and ADHD is, is tapping your pencil. Well, crap. Well, that's every Which is me boy all in the, the world. Time. And here's what happens. If you look at the difference now, here, so let's look at some of the cultural things too, is today we expect little boys to be like little girls. True. In so many yeah. ways. We, we actually, if we don't, we're going to force them because little girls by nature, I mean, they're all, yes, we know, remember, we know there's little girls that, are, that like to run around and be little tomboys that way, but the average little girl actually does listen better. For Just sure. by hormonally, Calm, they're different. Cool, Testosterone yeah. in a little boy, for example, is a decent level. And guess what happens? He's supposed to be charged up, running around, and bouncing, jumping off. You know, think of it this way. I have daughters. You know the sad part is this? Is my daughters don't body slam each other off the couches. Do you, Sam? What happens with little boys? <laughs> body slam. I used to do that to my sisters, and I'd get a spoon. Oh, yeah. My mom probably didn't want me to tell me this. But, man, my mom whooped some, broke some spoons over my hinder a couple times. Yardsticks. <laughs> so, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> and guess what, guys? For all you non-disciplined people, I turned out okay, I think. Okay? And so the cool thing is this. Is so the teacher's suggestion is based on, for example, she has to control an environment that actually sets her up for failure. Because you're asking kids to be the same. And on top of it, the average kid's breakfast is some sugar-based cereal. Yep. Or some toast or some bagel that gets their, their, jacked their body up jacked up that way. Mm-hmm. So the concept of ADD, ADD and ADHD, for example, is, is kind of bogus because guess what? If I jacked your kid up on caffeine, it's not really a condition. You remember the, the, the condition that's diagnosed for it that way and, and given a code doesn't mean it really exists. It's not measurable. Okay, it's actually all subjective. Now people say, Doc, hold the phone because you have them come in here and you run some testing on certain hormone levels and you can run on some, you know, like some peripheral neurotransmitters. Guys, there's no test out there. Let me say this right now. There's no test out there to directly measure all the neurotransmitters. Now, but remember, a lot of our neurotransmitters circulate through all of our body and you can pick up those because some of the excitatory ones are very excessive sure. and they do cross the blood-brain barrier. So those can be tested. So number one, get your child tested. Yes. Okay. Yes. Second of all, I can't ever see the validity of the medication, ever. Now, let me explain why. It's such a crazy psychotropic medication. The side effects are ridiculous because what it does, it changes the body, changes the neurological system that way. It changes the growth plates that way. It stunts growth. It accelerates growth. Well, actually, it accelerates it so quickly, it seems like it stunts growth because their growth plates close too quickly. Um, Depression is one of the side effects. It is. Should we read a couple of the side effects real Go quick? For it. Hey, some of these things that I experienced, when I started this stuff in second grade ladies and gentlemen, and went through this stuff on and off, on and off. And my mom will have a story for you in a minute of what I used to do with these uh, little heinous pills. But anyways, here's some of the side effects. Nervousness, agitation, anxiety, sleep problems, stomach pain, loss of appetite, weight loss, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, palpitations, headache, vision problems, increased heart rate. Are you kidding me? I think I'd rather have the kid jump around the room. Absolutely stinking loony. Do you see what And see, but what happens is, and, and so this is where people say, because I know a lot of people get this. And Jill Weedmeyer, actually, thank you for writing a nice long comment on there. Do you see that one, Ross? You want to read that one? Yep, I got to find, find it, find it, find it, find it. Here's right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, Jill Wiedemeyer says this, eldest son diagnosed ADHD and bipolar, diet and exercise, no red dye, meds, horrible, messed up. His system, teachers and principals wanted meds. Schools got $1,200 per month from state for any student diagnosed and on meds. That yep. was back in the day. The horror story was the schools put my son through, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a mess. And, and the one thing is this. It is a mess. And, and if you think about it this way, the public school sure. system is just that, a system controlled by government. Guys, you're going to learn this. We're going to do a, a show just on this. We're going to do it just on why government shouldn't be involved in anything, especially yes. – especially public schools, especially healthcare and things like that. Because what happens is, once again, they set a system 
that everybody's supposed to follow and they want everybody to be the same. Yes. And Cookie cutter kids. It does. So the, so I don't blame the principals. I don't blame the teachers. I don't, it's, it's a bad system. You know, it's like a lot of people come to me and say, doc, you know, we got to change the school systems food. Why? You're not going to, it's government ran. You have to change a bunch of policies that way. Yes, you can fight and do what you want that way. Why don't you just pack your kids lunch? Mm. Why don't you just not put them in school? You know, the homeschool, them private school. But see what happens when it takes their effort. A lot of parents are like, well, I won't do that. Don't want to do my own. Don't want to. Don't want to take the money out of my own pocket. Yes. And stuff like that. It's like, oh, already taking my taxes. Well, no. Guess what? That's what you fight for. Those are things you fight for that way. So, I, I, I feel sorry for the principals and teachers what they have to go through before this. Heck, you know. Now, drunk. Are there some teachers that are just yes? We know this in every profession. There's some teacher that wants everybody to be a zombie. Don't want to teach them, and they want right. they'll medicate every child that way. There are some exceptions. I do understand that, but in general, like I said, most of the teachers are just trying to do their job well. Yes, and stuff like that. And so, therefore, if but on the flip side, you and I, we did suffer. Like we were discussing before, you know, I always felt like my skin was crawling. Yeah. I felt like my brain was going 100 miles an hour, and I could do very few things to focus. And watching a teacher write a math problem on the uh, thing, my attention was gone like three seconds. You bet. Absolutely. So, so how do you approach this? Okay, what do you do? Where do you go from there? Well, remember, you have to look at this. I, I kind of get, I kind of jack about this because we're talking about caffeine the other night. Because there's some people's liver process it really well. And guess what happens? They could drink at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> you know what I'm That's us. And there's some people that, no joke, doc, if I drink it past four o'clock, I'm up half yep, the night. Half the night. You bet. Well, that should show you something that way. Not everybody processes even things. Now, remember, guys, let me explain this. Caffeine's not bad. Let me say it again. <sighs> now, synthetic caffeine and added caffeine isn't bad, but sure. caffeine exists in a lot of natural products, including teas and things like that, that your body actually could be a very good nutrient. Heck, you know, caffeine through coffee, even rectally, is actually phenomenal for your GI. That's a whole nother topic, okay? <laughs> another day, please. Another day, please, okay? <laughs> but the point is this. So what they do is they demonize these ingredients, well, sure. no, every person is different how they metabolize things. That's why some kids can eat Fruit Loops in the morning, which I don't ever suggest, okay, because it's bad for you, and be just fine. And some kids, for example, put their body into such an excitatory state. So here's what happens. So when you go to the pediatrician and ask their advice, the only thinking they have is what? Medication. Medication. You know, people go, my doctor said, well, your doctor always does his drugs and surgery. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like if you go to an acupuncture, he's say, get acupuncture done. You yeah. understand? And so we don't take that approach. Actually, tonight's kind of fun because what I'm speaking on tonight about cannabinoids, the majority of the stuff that I talk about tonight, I can't legally practice. Correct. But it's my job as a doc, as an educator, because that's all doctors really are. It's supposed to be educators and let people make their choice. It's, it's about to give them the information so they can make their choice. Yes. But when a teacher or a principal or a pediatrician says, you have to do this, you look them straight back in the eyes and say, no, I don't. Do you understand? You know, and, and, and the sad part is this, and here's one thing why you have to get government out of all this crap, because if you disagree with a pediatrician or a principal or a teacher, they'll call CPS on you. Child Protective Services. That's right. And here's one thing, guys, once again, I'm knocking nobody on door. makes, gives you the right, and here's what happens. So here comes all the naysayers now, because of the, of the, the, the ridiculous people that have abused their kids or neglect their kids, once again, because it's a government system, they lamp them all together for the three people out of the millions that do, do it right. Yes. You see, Sam? See, so get, your, get that out of there that way. Get government out of those things that way. It's only going to hurt you. Government makes things bad, period. Yes. And, so, you know, once again, we always talk about, you know, giving the people the right information so they can start making informed choices for yes. themselves. Question the doctors. Ask about the testing. Ask the teachers why, you know. And then even, really, I get it. I mean, there was probably a time for my mother as a single mom raising two boys yep. that got me bouncing off the walls, having a rough time, getting called in all the time to the principal's office. You know, mom's getting pulled in for all these meetings with the teachers. So what does she want to do? Get me some help. So it probably seemed like the right idea back at the time because my brother, love you, my man. Yes. Man, whatever that boy touched turned to gold in regards to studies yes. and it was frustrating so i know in genuine she really cared but it just was insane what this medicine did yes to my body it everything does. you know the infection you know i just i can't even tell you it brings back crazy, crazy memories. memories and you know who best can speak into those memories our, our moms. moms now before we bring our moms up i got some funny <laughs> i have to say some, something really funny because i love that our show is expanding people and actually yes. people i grew up with that way bob burnt Actually, our, my band teacher, probably one of the most influential people to me. I think there's two. I know nice. even my nephew here. Probably two of the most influential people from Kermit's High School that didn't follow that mold to me was actually Mr. Game, 
who, for example, I still can't call him by his name. He's like, I, I see him now. And he's like, call me Vic. I said, I can't. I, I got to call, yeah. call you Mr. Game. Posture he, respect. Even yep. though that I used to go through his things, he used to look at me and say, Flynn, you could do better than that. And I was like, it was great. And, 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 then, and then, oh my goodness, like I said, uh, uh, Mr. Burnt just said, see, I, I can't call him Bob. I'm so used to calling him Mr. Burnt. And he's like, <laughs> I have some stories about Pat. <laughs> yes, trust me. Oh uh, my. Man, he used to, oh my goodness. He was, he was such a great man. He even know, for example, I used to be in back and I was percussion and I'd be screwed off a bunch that way. Can't imagine that. Yeah, I know. He, <laughs> but he was so good at getting us to do the things we're supposed to do. So he, even though he was the band teacher, he was actually a teacher. Yes. He actually involved in my life and he'd call me out on stuff like that because even though I was going 100 miles an hour, he'd be like, that, he's like, no, no, Patrick, you know, you got it. And, and he was amazing. And I just say, hey, Bob, thanks for watching. It's even where me call him Bob. <laughs> Mr. Burnt, thank you for watching. So two, and so what happens is, once again, Two great teachers in, in a, an amazing, you know, public system that way that, uh, that guess what, made a big impact. So you bet. speaking of big impacts. Here we go. The, the, the other women in our life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Next to our beautiful wives. But let's bring Without on our them, beautiful mamas. We are nothing. Of that. So Come on. Here we go. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we were not growing in a cocoon. We actually have mothers. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Pat Skorzewski, my mom. Hello. And yes, and Linda Flynn, my mama. Uh, okay. Yes. Hello. So, Linda, Pat. Okay, yes. I never call my mom Linda, but anyway, it's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> why don't we do this? For example, why don't you guys just give, because this mom, you can feel the emotion coming through her and what she was going with that way. Share story and share what it was like, you know, for example, growing up and, and what the counselor said about me when we were young. But why don't you give us just a story and some of the things that you, that as a mom, trying to raise a kid, going through what they'd classify today as ADD and ADD. Well, first of all, I'm not going to talk as much as he does, <laughs> as fast as he does, because he always talks fast. And, well, as a child, going to school, he, um, he didn't have, his attention was not very good with teachers. Um, his homework was turning his papers over and drawing pictures of deer and deer hunting and gun shooting and that kind of stuff. Love so. It. Um, today, today they put me in counseling and think I'm going to shoot up a school. Yes, <laughs> it was hunting. Yes, yes. You know? but, and, but you know what? I never thought of that at that time. Mm -hmm. And I never, ever thought about drugs mm -hmm. at that time for him. Um, and I, we had a counselor at one time at the school that also said he was going to be a juvenile delinquent. He was going to end up in, in prison and whatever because he did not pay attention. And what? it wasn't what? Until, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> what yeah, you say? Squirrel. There you go. <laughs> it wasn't until he hit about fifth grade, and and like you said, he had some good teachers mm -hmm. that made him accountable, and I do think that helped. It does. Um, he 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 was more attentive. He did. He respected those teachers, mm -hmm. and for that, then he did he did better. But. Um, yeah, it, it, it's hard when you when you, when a counselor tells you you that your son could be a juvenile delinquent. You, yes. your heart breaks, yes. you know. But for some reason, it never dawned on me. I had him at home, and I never saw what they saw. Um, sure, he ran around like a maniac. Yeah, he swung the girls around and broke, broke the her collarbone. Um, yeah, they sorry, were. sis. Yeah, you had to tell that story. I broke my sister's collarbone. I threw her into the fireplace. Him in the neighborhood. <laughs> Boy, swung her around, threw her in a fireplace, yep. broke her collar, mm -hmm. wrong, emergency room. I mean, there were trips like that, but there was nothing. I knew my son, and I knew deep down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I saw a child. I saw a little boy running around, being crazy, being a kid, running outside, zooming in to go to the bathroom, zooming back out to go, you know. And to it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh. it is hard, and... So I kind of ignored, I ignored it. I ignored what they said. And I said, no, I know him and I'll work with him. And he wasn't a good reader. Mm, do you remember? Yeah. <clears throat> to get him to read, I had to make my comic books what he liked. I did anything to get him to read at home and whatever. Because he didn't want nothing to do with reading. Couldn't focus. Yep. Um, and then it just, he, he as, changed. As my health started to get better, I changed. He changed. Yeah. And we never thought of taking him to, I mean, I never thought of taking mm -hmm. a doctor about that. It was something, you know, I'm going to deal with and I'm going to work with. And, and look how great he turned out. 
And then, right. and then you've got this <laughs> mess right here. Yeah. And, you know, mom who, you know, worked crazy hours and everything else. Like I said, a completely different existence from my brother. So how was I, mom? You were probably wired 98% of the time. And the other 2% you tried to sleep. So that's, uh. that's pretty much the program there. And my story is, is that I'm a registered nurse. I'm getting these daily calls from the teachers from the principal he's tapping his pencil Pencils, he's very disruptive yep. he's throwing his pencils he's Ooh. not wind, minding in class he's not paying attention so what do we do well maybe you should send him to the doctor to see what's going on now from a nursing perspective i'm going to listen to that take him in and at that time the ad D and ADHD weren't really out there. Just, it was just a condition. Yep. So we're going to give you some medication. Brought the medication home, and it did it help? Uh, it altered my son, so I didn't know him. He was yes. a zombie. Yeah, There's a, a key. That's, that's huge. Pat, say that again. That, that's it a altered my son, so I didn't know him. Wow. He was not the same boy. He would take it. Then there were periods that I would do laundry and those little pills are floating on the top of the washing machine. So there's why my oh. son came back to his normal self when he wasn't taking it. Yes. Then the teachers were back on me again. So it was a band-aid. It wasn't a cure. And the struggle back and forth, though, I think, which was even worse for me a little bit. And maybe some of you parents who even have kids, maybe you should question this, but it was like, who's right? Mm -hmm. My mom? Or the school, or am I right? Yeah, right. And what exactly. I'm feeling, and it was it was a struggle, honestly, that caused me to why why was I hiding those pills in my pocket or in my brother's beer can collection? Yes. <laughs> oh my, they, they and, and failing everything. miserably because I didn't know at one point who was on my side. Right. right. And luckily enough, um, he did have a teacher towards the end of his career that was able to channel all his energy without medication into pottery. Mr. And, Weir, and he actually. Mm -hmm brought out mm -hmm. the talent, and one of his pieces was actually put in the Yaki Museum so people could see mm -hmm. what he had done. So he channeled it the right way. So is medication the answer? I don't believe it is. And that's coming from a nurse who thought it was the absolute right, right. thing to do. Right. Um, there are other ways to do it. You find the positives, and that's not just with children, it's with everybody else. You find the positives. You blow that up, and everything, you find out what's going on in their body, what mm. foods are going in their body, what triggers them off, and you adjust it from there. He, was he an easy child? He was an easy child. <laughs> Medication just made him a zombie. And was I frustrated at the time? Sure. I was a single parent working long hours, mm -hmm. and this was a Band-Aid fix, which was not the right fix, because once the Band-Aid came off, mm. boom, yep. it was right back. There was Ross. Yeah, yep. exactly. That's but a big point there. It is huge. You know, the, the medication, and any medication, even if it's high blood pressure or any medication, the minute that you get off it, you're back in the same sick state you were before. Absolutely. See, so that's yes. why, that's what, that's the concept we're trying to get across. So I'm not, let's, let's recap on the fact that if you look at both of us came from, our brains were overactive in some way. Yep. I, they would diagnose us with ADD or ADHD back then based on what their criteria was. Um, we had actually, we did have some influential teachers that yes, did, did believe in us that yes. way yes. and stuff like that. And so when you really look at this way, like I said, the system today is failing a lot of kids. Absolutely. It doesn't mean the teachers are bad. It doesn't mean the principal is bad. They're just not that, equipped to succeed. That's not, they're yeah. not. And so what happens is, so the only other thing they can suggest is medication that way yes. and things like that. But medication doesn't get the brain back to normal. There's so many steps. But today, kids are on all-time high for psychiatric medication. Yes. It's why we're seeing such a change in all the kids so many. It's, it's actually pretty disgusting. And what is it's him? doing to young men yeah. Oh, that is absolutely just making them women. Exactly. Mothers do not feel guilty if you don't follow the directions of the doctors. Oh, that. Come on now. Wow. Don't feel guilty. That's a preach right there. It is. Coming from a mom. It's easy for us to get up here. Yep. You know we do have, do have kids, but they're growing up in a different way. Yes. Do you see It's like, uh, um, and, and no joke, talk about sugar. Uh, across the street where I grew up that way, my grandpa had a bar. We used to run over there and grab a Snickers and a Coca-Cola every single day. Do you say it? So it's like, but we didn't know any better that I way. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, oh, Mom. You know what's oh, really funny? Oh, here we go. There's so I many, didn't know a lot. There's so many stories I told her after I left the house and stuff like that. After in college, she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, then we kind of did that. So anyway, so 
Closing thoughts there, ladies. Closing thoughts there, Ross, on a wonderful show. I think, if anything, I would ask that you guys, literally, there's episodes that I would say, yes, all of them are amazing and like and share them. This one I have a real strong mm. personal attachment to. Me too. And, you know, I know Doc does and our mom. So please, share this. People need to hear this. And, and even yes, just what do. these ladies are saying, these awesome moms, is revolutionary. Change the way you think. Change the way you approach taking back control of your health care. And I promise you this, next week, Tuesday, we are going to continue to challenge the way you think. We'll see you then. Thank you.